My wife and I took a trip to San Francisco to do another stress test on the full self-driving beta, and to be honest with you, it did struggle quite a bit. As those of you who have driven around San Francisco during rush hour already know, the roads were extremely chaotic, and sometimes the full self-driving beta had no idea what to do. I had people honking at me, crazy pedestrians, and I even gave autopilot some challenges where there were no way to be able to complete them successfully just to see what would happen. Honestly, San Francisco at rush hour is probably going to be the final boss for full self-driving. This particular video isn't going to be showing or discussing those instances. Instead, I will save that for a full breakdown video in the future, similar to my others. But something happened at the very end of this trip that made me rethink how the full self-driving beta works behind the scenes and made me realize that I actually have zero idea of how it actually works. When people have asked me in the comments if the car learns on its own, like if you drive down a road and it has trouble with it a bunch of times, will it get better on its own on a local scale in between software updates? And I've always said that I didn't think so, and I highly doubt it does that. I thought the way that it works was the car flags certain data to send back to the autopilot team, and then when they use that data to retrain the system, a new firmware version would be pushed out that makes the car behave better in these particular scenarios. From my previous experiences, that is what it seems like. Typically when my car has some trouble through a road or some intersection, it continues having trouble there until a software version gets pushed out that makes it behave differently. But what happened in the final stretch of our trip today made me second guess everything that I had previously assumed, and I'm interested to hear all of your thoughts on it. But first, I finally have an update to those of you supporting this channel through Patreon. You guys are all getting, wait for it, a picture of the back of my car. Oh, bet you didn't expect that. <laughs> These things are freaking awesome. I'm not exactly sure what you're going to do with it, but if it's not hanging up somewhere visible in your garage, just know I'm disappointed. You're all getting one of these no matter the amount pledged as a thank you for your support. To show my appreciation for the higher pledges that made giving gifts like this possible, to the 10 people that have pledged a combined amount over $20 these past few months, we'll be getting something extra special. It's really hard to show just how cool these look on video, and trust me, you won't see how cool they actually are until you get them in your hands, but they're shot glasses with the full self-driving visualizations etched into the side, handmade by my wife, Carol. Let's cheers to 10,000 subscribers with some Tesla Kila. A huge thank you to you guys for making this happen. Unfortunately, there's currently some COVID-related shipping restrictions to other countries, but to those of you that this affects, just know that everything will be set aside with your name on it until the shipping restrictions are lifted. Thank you again for supporting my channel. It truly means the world to me. And if you'd like to support my channel, please consider following the link in the video description. Also, shout out to those of you who have bought merch. You are amazing. Before we get into the video, I'm going to show you the problem. I wanted to break this down for you in Google Maps, but this area has changed so much recently that it looks completely different. Basically, Autopilot has to make the next right-hand turn, which is in a few hundred feet. So it assumes this right-hand turn lane is the lane that it needs to be in. But this is actually the entrance for a bus station, and the real turn is about 50 feet in front of that. Let's watch and see how Autopilot does on the first attempt. As you can probably see, it is not able to read these uh, no right turn except for transit signs yet. As you saw, Autopilot had some trouble and was not able to do this successfully. The planned path was jumping around wildly as it just tried to decide what to do, and it ended up getting stuck in this right hand turn, which did require me to take over. I'm going to be fast forwarding and playing out the entire clips of, of what happened in between, just so that there's no question that these were all taken in chronological order.
so rather surprisingly, a bit of a different result here. Autopilot actually turns on the turn signal and changes over into the correct lane, but then makes a mistake while trying to plan a path to the next right turn, which makes it awkwardly stop at this stoplight. I did have to take over when the light turned green to get it through the intersection. I was thinking about just calling it a day and heading home after this, but I'm sure glad that I didn't. You know what? I want to try that one more time. After this guy goes by. Okay, you guys, are you seeing what I'm seeing? Am I crazy? Or did Autopilot make better and better decisions every time it went through that section until it finally nailed it? How the heck is this even possible? Watch how early it turns on the turn signal to get out of the bus lane and how confident it is about it, when just a few minutes before it was driving completely differently. I have no idea what to even say about what just happened. I'm really looking forward to reading your comments. I mean, I, I guess it's entirely possible that this all just happened by chance, but gosh, that's really hard to believe with what I just experienced. Please, please, please let me know what you think in the comments. And as always, thank you so much for watching. Bye.